Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lay. Happy weekend. Happy Saturday. Happy Sunday. I hope your weekend is great so far. Well, thank you for joining me. All right. So um, we want to talk about the Miles Gore case. Um, actually, I've been talking, I have tried to talk about the subject for a while, but I have not found a good case to illustrate my point. So um, when the discussion about who Miles Guo really is uh, unfolded last week, and I think it's a good opportunity for us to talk about CCP's infiltration in the Chinese community. Uh, the, the point of discussion is not so much about who Miles Guo is, but really all the issues uh, that that is tied um, that is tied to who he is, who he is. So the U.S. is a free country in which people can come um, and visit on their own for business or for, for visit. And it ha this has enabled the CCP to conduct infiltration activities. So from the threat of the social media apps, such as TikTok, WeChat, to the purchases of large parcels of land, including farmland and also land near military facilities, to operating media apps such as Newsbreak, which is a, a news app focused on local news, and it's founded by Chinese. Um, so from all of these activities, the United States has not been able to stop the CCP from infiltrating American society. Although Western governments have become more and more aware of CCP's activities, they have been slow in coming up with a solution or in or in coming up with a response. American politicians are still debating whether or not or how to ban TikTok. Beijing doesn't allow foreign citizens to freely establish business or organizations in China, but take full advantage of our freedom and use it to build its influence over here. Of all the different types of infiltration activities, the most difficult one um, for the Americans to tackle or to recognize or to address is the infiltration in the overseas Chinese community. One example uh, is recently is the, uh, the, the overseas Chinese police station that we have found uh, all over the world in the, in the Chinese communities, right? Um, they're they they are set up in conjunction with local Chinese organizations such as the hometown associations or the uh, trade and commerce associations. I made a video on that and you can watch it. Uh, that's not what we're going to focus on today. But my point is by controlling community leaders and these community organizations, CCP directly implements their agenda overseas. And this is an area the West has ignored. Now they're just focusing on these police stations, but they, what they really need to focus on is these communities, right? How the CCP infiltrate and controls uh, these overseas communities. Um, but of all the overseas Organiz of all the overseas Chinese communities or of all the organizations, there's an unlikely group that the CCP has a big influence on, and it's least detected by the outside world, and that is CCP's influence on the pro-democracy or slash anti-CCP Chinese American community. And you might say, wait a minute, how can CCP have control over the anti-CCP community? How does it influence those who are against it. Well, let me illustrate that through one recent case, and it's the widely reported um, case of Miles Guo, right? This, this case, by the way, has been trending in China. It ranked number, number two in, in, in the headline news in China. And, and that's because Miles, Miles Guo has, the exiled Chinese businessman has amassed a, a large following among the overseas Chinese who are against the CCP. So last Wednesday, the 52-year-old was arrested. I actually have a picture of him. Uh, here we go. So he was arrested last week in Manhattan 
and on charge of 11 crim criminal counts, including securities fraud, wire fraud, and concealment of money laundering. Uh, he's accused of a, a complex conspiracy to defraud thousands of his um, online followers, and the total amount is $1 billion, and they're dollars, not yuan. So if convicted, he could face prison terms of up to 195 years, and he's, he's re now uh, not on bail. His arrest is welcomed by Beijing and became trending. Uh, Western media also widely reported his arrest. And after his arrest, some of his followers, and mostly people who are anti-CCP enthusiasts, they gathered outside his apartment in, in New York City to voice their support. The claim that the CCP has infiltrated the FBI and colluded with the U.S. government to have arrested him because they're fearful of Gore's or Miles Gore's revelation of CCP's fraud. These people see Gore as a hero, while others, other Chinese uh, feel pleased that a fraudster is finally being caught. So you see this division amongst the Chinese Americans, right, um, towards his arrest. Even the CCP officials in Beijing, I think, might have fixed mixed uh, sorry mixed feelings about his arrest. Some were worried about his arrest, and others felt a sense of relief. Didn't we see um, news that his apartment was on fire, or the building where his apartment? was was on fire and there was a, a New York Post article about uh, the FBI is investigating to see if the fire was uh, ignited remotely. So that made me think that some officials, some people in Beijing uh, worry very much about his arrest while others, other officials felt a sense of relief. So there's division amongst the CCP officials. And then even among Americans, there is a division. Um, Western media rushed to report his arrest and mentioned his association with Stephen Bannon, former strategist of former president Donald Trump. Um, even though Bannon is not involved in the case against Gore. And there are also other Americans who call Miles Gore a true fighter against the CCP. So when I look at the responses from everyone, I think it's interesting how Miles Gore divides the public opinions amongst the CCP officials, the anti-CCP enthusiasts, um, and the American public. So who is Miles Gore, right? Well, the U.S. prosecutors uh, disclosed that the FBI actually invested, came, investigated him as early as 2019 and searched his apartment, and they found about 96 cell phones at his home, about half of which were kept in a safe in a bag that, that blocked um, cell phone signals. That seemed to be a lot of cell phones. But not only him, his office manager and special assistant um, a lady whose last name is Wong, who also faces charges, uh, charges of fraud in New York, has 12 cell phones. So that obviously tells us that um, these cell phones are needed and are dedicated to uh, phone calls or communications with different individuals. Um, he's a businessman who's very close to the former Deputy Minister of National Security, Ma Jian. You know, National Security is a, is a spy agency, right? So Ma Jian uh, is also one of those people who are most loyal to Zheng Qinghong. Uh, Zheng Qinghong uh, is the de facto leader of the Jiang Zemin faction for the past decade. So you can say that Miles Guo worked very closely with the Jiang Zemin faction in China. And in January 2015, Ma Jian, his friend, and also the Deputy um, Minister of National Security, of State Security, I think it's State Security. So the guy was investigated for corruption by Xi Jinping. 
And two months after that, in March of 2015, a Chinese media who has a close connection with Xi Jinping, or you can say a pro-Xi Jinping media. I mean, at that point, there was still media that's called pro-Xi Jinping versus pro Jiang Zemin because Xi Jinping came to power uh, only a few years ago. By now, I think they're what, all pro-Xi Jinping. So at the time, this media that's pro-Xi Jinping published this article, name-calling Miles Guo as uh, colluding with the disgraced Ma Jian and uh, called Guo a power hunger. And according to Guo, Miles Guo himself, he left China for the United States after that for fear of his well-being in China. However, China experts believe that things are not as simple as Miles has claimed. He is widely believed to be a spy working in the state security system. And Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign against the Jiang faction greatly annoyed Zheng Qinghong, right? The, the, the de facto, the, the de deputy of the faction. Particularly when Ma Jian, Mao's friend and the former deputy minister of state security was taken down. And then Mao's school, it was said, or people believe that Mao's was used by the Jiang faction in the West to be a whistleblower against Wang Qishan, the man who spearheaded Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign. So in the early days, um, Miles did a lot of expose against Wang Qishan and even spread rumors about the conflict between Wang Qishan and Xi Jinping. Um, that, of course, terribly annoyed Xi Jinping, right? And, uh, and he was wanted. Um, then something very interesting happened. Uh, Miles sent a message to Xi Jinping on May 9th, 2017. Miles said in a video that he is not against Xi Jinping. He's not against China, but is against using corruption to be against corruption. Um, and then on May the 24th, shortly after that, four officials from Chinese state security visited him at his apartment in New York, uh, which, is, which is on the 18th floor of the um, Sydney Netherland Hotel. And in a meeting that lasted more than an hour, the officials urged him to return to China. So Xi Jinping had hoped to wanted him to extradite him to China and used many of its contacts for, for help during the, both the Obama administration and Trump administration. Uh, said they, 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 they asked help uh, from people such as the casino tycoon Steve Wynn, who owns the Wynn Hotel in um, Las Vegas, hip-hop hip star Plath Michael, and also Republican fundraiser Elliot Broidy. So somewhere there, um, people believe that Miles Guo broke up with the Jiang faction um, after, after he pledged loyalty to Xi Jinping. Um, so on July 23rd, how do we know that? Well, he was, Miles was in was entangled in a legal case in 2019. So on July 23rd, a company called Strategic Vision LLC, it's a DC-based investigative firm um, with which Miles had, has, has a business dispute. Uh, the company sued Miles Guo for being a Chinese government spy. At the deposition, uh, Miles Guo would not tell whether he was getting money from communist China, but admitted he sent a letter to Xi Jinping that he didn't cross the red line in exposing too much dirt on CCP leaders. I think I have a page of that. Do I have that? I, I do have that here, here we go. So, oh, it's the court, it's not the deposition. So this one is actually in front of a judge. So yeah. So the, the, the court asked him if he signed a letter to President Xi Jinping saying that I didn't cross the red line. And he said, yes, I did sign such a letter. Um, at the same case, 
he also he also admitted this is um this is a post um he also admitted that he, his ultimate concern was not to overthrow the ccp but to fight the wang qishan faction within the ccp so i think his pledge of uh loyalty to xi jinping probably make him made him break up with the jiang faction and this shift was noticed by the New York Times, which published a front page article in 2017 and calling the whole uh, Miles score drama the biggest political story of the year in China. And the Times also believed that Guo may have the support of certain figures or factions within the CCP who are trying to influence the political situation in China. So, Miles Guo is a showman and took full advantage of his notoriety and grew his platform to become a leader of a, of a some sort of an anti-CCP movement. Um, but he was he's not without controversies. There are many Chinese who do not trust him. Um, but he monetized from his followers and profited from the anti-CCP platform that he built. Uh, and now he's um, accused of having misappropriated funds. Um, while being a leader of an anti-CCP force, he maintained contact with CCP leadership, or at least he wants others to believe that he still has relationship with the big boss. Um, because the New York Times, when the New York Times reporter re visited him at his home in the hotel, he went to another room to answer a phone call with the speaker on. His assistant explained to the to the to the reporter that a senior aide to Xi Jinping was on the other end of the line. Do I believe that's really the case? I think there's a, a great percentage that it's staged. It's staged for the Times reporter to believe that he has a relationship with with Xi Jinping, but it may also be true, but there is a percentage that it's staged. Um, but the reason that I believe that he still has a connection with the, the top's uh, leadership is the 96 phones he has, right? So he needs a, a unique phone to talk to each person that he has, and that that's why he he, he has kept so many phones. All right, so that's just half of the mystery. Let's talk about the other half. Um, because there's another person. Here we go. The second person who was um, indicted was Miles' longtime financial advisor, William Ye, who lives in London now. He faces the same 11 criminal counts, plus one more, plus an obstruction uh, to justice charge. He is at large and faces prison terms of up to 215 years. So he, he's facing charges um, 20 years more than Miles. So he's more guilty than Miles Gore. So who is he? Well, he's called one of the most successful businessmen in Hong Kong, a master of cryptocurrency, an entrepreneur, and a philanthrop philanthropist. He was the CEO of Hamilton Investment Management, uh, a, a global fund manager and founder of global digital exchange, Himalaya Exchange. And this is exactly the exchange that, that the US Justice, Justice Department called fraudulent. Um, and Mr. Ye is, is a resident of both Hong Kong and UK. Now, what's odd about this guy is he's very pro-CCP. He joined forces with other pro-CCP establishment or, estab or other CCP groups in Hong Kong to openly oppose the students during the Hong Kong Umbrella Movement and the, the later the pro-democracy movement. He's a Hong Kong native, um, but he's also a member of the Chongqing Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. You know, that's the organization known as the CCP spy agency responsible for infiltration outside China. 
He was also the former executive chairman of the Hong Kong Youth Association. It's a pro-CCP United Front group in Hong Kong. In 2015, at the 20th anniversary ceremony of Hong Kong of the Hong Kong Youth Association, here it is. I have a picture. Um, he invited Zhang Xiaoming, who's the director or who was the director of CCP's liaison office in Hong Kong. Uh, basically, this is the highest ranking CCP official in Hong Kong. Uh, he, he invited him, he invited him, the CCP official, to officiate the ceremony, at the ceremony. And also in attendance at the ceremony was the commissioner of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, from Beijing. And also the commander of the PLA garrison in Hong Kong, Major General Tan Ban Hong, I think that's his name. So as you can see, he must be very influential within the uh, pro-CCP circle in Hong Kong uh, for him to, to invite, for, for his event to be attended by such high-level CCP officials, right? By the way, the Hong Kong Liaison Office reports directly into the CCP's Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Committee, which is headed by Xi Jinping himself. So if you really look at in terms of the um, administrative hierarchy, um, William Ye isn't an ordinary Hong Kongese who just maintains a good relations with the CCP. His ranking is very high because um, the guy that he invites to, to his event actually is only two levels away from Xi Jinping, right, in terms of administrative um, ranking. So he, that tells us he, this guy, the William, William guy, his ranking is very high in the system. So now I have introduced both these two guys that have been um, accused of, um, of fraud. That brings us to the question, why would Miles Gore who is building an anti-CCP movement outside China against Beijing, want to partner with someone who's openly, who's knowingly pro-CCP. That doesn't make sense, doesn't it? So even if Miles want to be successful in his, um, in his endeavor building his follower, why would he want to partner with someone who's openly pro-CCP? Um, and then Guo was asked about this question in his in the 2021 uh, trial or deposition by um, at, at the trial. So he was asked, Mr. Guo, have you done any background research into William Ye? And his answer was no. And when asked, are you introduced? Uh, oh, oh. And not art. And you introduced William Ye to close associates as your money man, haven't you? And and he um, he used the Fifth Amendment to avoid answering the questions. So, and there may be other questions about William Ye um, at the trial that was addressed to Miles Gore, but he refused to answer them. So some people believe that William Ye has set up a trap for Miles Gore to step in. Miles Gore isn't very familiar with Western society. He barely speaks English. The financial fraud that he has committed was engineered by his partner and, and an advisor, William Ye. So people say, or some people hold the belief that CCP took advantage of Miles' love of money and send William Ye to set up a trap for him. Because now Miles is arrested and William is at large. And if he runs back to China, the US won't get him. Um, so that's one school of thought, but that, that's a theory. But I think it's not totally impossible. This is because one of the known CCP tactics um, against the overseas Chinese communities is to break down the pro-democracy uh, community by, smear by smearing campaign against those activists. So I have an example to show you. Um, 
Oh yeah, this is this is the um, this is the actual the the court document from the from the deposition. You know, when asked about William Ye, he answered with the Fifth Amendment. All right, so now let's talk about this gentleman. Uh, his name is Xiong Yan. He's a Chinese American human rights activist, a military officer, and a pro Protestant chaplain. He was a dissident involved in, 19, in the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest and came to the United States as a political refugee in 1992. And he later later became a chaplain uh, in the U.S. Army. I actually, I have a picture of him. So, um, and sir, he served in, in Iraq. And last year, he ran for Congress in New York's 10th Congressional District. And his campaign was reportedly attacked by agents of, of CCP, uh, of, uh, from, you know, the, the, the Ministry of State Security. And the way they, they did that was, um, let me just come back. A CCP spy by the name of Lin Qiming hired a private investigator hoping to dig up information such as extramarital affairs or tax evasion on him before the June primary. And if the private detector uh, or a private investigator couldn't come up with anything, he was instructed to fabricate things to destroy Xiong's reputation. Um, fortunately, the spy was caught, but Unfortunately, Mr. Xiong lost his campaign. And this is one of the tactics the CCP uses against people who actively speak up against the CCP. Um, they take advantage of human weakness and, and use your weakness again to ruin you. Um, so if you actually are engaged in uh, extramarital affairs or have not paid taxes, they will find you and they'll use that against you. Um, and their tactic has worked. And because I know some pro-democracy activists in uh, living in the U.S. outside China um, have have you know suffered from uh, from from the loss of their reputation by 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 this kind of a campaign. Um, so it has it has worked to some extent. Um, so this is, this is one possibility. And the other tactic that CCP has used is it will develop, CCP will develop its own anti-CCP activists. So it's, it's counterintuitive, right? So that just shows you how, how deceptive this whole organization is. So instead of, you know, having instead of openly against people who are against them, uh, the regime would develop or cultivate or, or, or train anti-CCP activists, and they'll send these people to infiltrate into uh, these organizations. And in, or in order to make these fake activists credible, look authentic, credible, they will lock them up or even subject them to imprisonment or torture. Uh, to create some stories uh, before before they were they are let out and be sent overseas, um, and there are there are people like that um, definitely because and and by doing this they made the 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 overseas Chinese communities very complicated. Because they lessen, because because these people at a, they may not reveal their true identity, but at crucial moment or at crucial events or turn of events, these people will secretly do things um, to discredit those people who are truly honest about their opinions. They're truly the, those people who are outspoken against the CCP. So these people will secretly do things. They will try to gain trust from everyone and then do harm um, at the most critical moment. And there are people like that in the Chinese communities. And the, the Western society, the Western the government, they are not able to tell. It's very difficult to tell because these people um, say the right things, do the right things, 
um, look like they've suffered a lot. They, they paid a big price, but you don't know who they are. Um, so that really complicates the, the whole matter, right? Um, so if you look at what CCP's tactics, tactics are, basically they use money and women or men, right? <laughs> money and sex, let's say, to, to be against people. Um, so what does that tells us on the, on the flip side, what does CCP fear the most? They fear people who are not in, not easily influenced by money or women or sex. Um, of course, there are a lot of people, a lot of, um, pro-democracy activists or people, um, who are openly outspoken about uh, about CCP and, and its crimes that are not being influenced by CCP. CCP. There are a lot of people like that. Um, by the way, why do you think the CCP is so scared of Falun Gong? Right? Like it's it, it, for, for like 20 years, it spreads like rumors and vicious attacks on Falun Gong. Why do you think, like if you look from the outside, like CCP is most... CCP is not scared of pro-democracy activists, but they're most scared of Falun Gong. And it's because Falun Gong people are nonviolent. Like you very rarely, of, of all, you, you don't see Falun Gong people like fight back or even like argue back. They just keep saying what, what, they, what they believe is true, right? They just keep saying the same thing. Um, and also they're not easily influenced by money. Uh, or other or other things, so that's why CCP, you know, is is scared of them the most. Um, so the question now is: so who Miles Guo is is very complex. There's no easy question to answer that. He may be someone who's genuinely against the CCP, but has been taken down by the CCP due to his love of money, or he might have been a CCP spy who is simply monetizing from the anti-CCP business and is not caught. Um, yes, some people have called it the anti-CCP business. Just like the anti-America platform in China that can be a business for many people to, to monetize on, right? Because th there, are, there are Chinese people who love America but would... Um, professionally uh, do things to criticize uh, America because that's their business um, and that's how they make their money. So, so by the same token, similarly, there are Chinese or Chinese Americans who live in this country who use the anti-CCP platform as a monetization opportunity, as their business. Um, I'm not saying they're the majority, but I'm saying there are people like that. And that's why I said it's very difficult for Western organizations or governments to detect that because of you have like a mixed bag of all sorts of characters. Um, how do we tell? It's difficult. Um, from my perspective, the ones that are rational the ones that are logical and, and the ones that are not overly emotional or showy in their, in their ideas um, are the ones that you probably can trust. I generally don't trust any Chinese who make sensational claims um, either way, right? Um, because there are, there are a lot of actors um, that would just do such things or say such things uh, for their business prospect. So I'm not trying to discredit, I, I'm not trying to discredit the pro-democracy movement or the, the anti-CCP activists outside China. I truly respect what they do. Um, but I'm just saying this, this community can be complex because there are other players um, sent by or influenced by the CCP. So it becomes a lot more complex. And I hope the Western government and Western organizations can pay attention to that and truly support the ones that are, um, that, that truly believe in what they say 
Um, you need to take this into your consideration when you engage the Chinese community. Um, that's that's my my message. All right. So hopefully, um, hopefully I have um, explained it. Sometimes these these uh, CCP tactic are so twisted. It it's kind of not so easy to explain, but I hopefully I explained it. All right, let me see if people have any questions. I want to first thank those who have made donations. I thank you. Um, let me see who is that. That's Travel with Love. Happy Saturday. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. And then I think I have another one. Amy Lai. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, let me see if people have questions. Uh, from Atom, Lei, have you ever been approached by covert Chinese police in the USA? Um, no, I have not. Or maybe I have. I don't know. There are covert Chinese police. Uh, but my family, my my family in China, has been harassed and approached. I must tell you that. Um, yeah. Um, Sumi Lind, uh, sorry about not being here last live stream. I should be here for all of this one. Nailed myself to the chair. Thank you so much for the, uh, for helping me organizing the live stream. I truly appreciate that. Much appreciated. All right. Let me see if people have any questions. Um, Frosty Flake, I really appreciate your wisdom. Thank you. Um, Sumilan. All right. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, any other questions? From India, Burke. Lay, could we say that the uh, official attacks on elderly Asians San Francisco are initiated in Beijing because of I don't know. Are you talking about the 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 shooting at the dance club during the Lunar New Year? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, I did not see any evidence suggesting that. It was it was a very sad, tragic tragedy. But I did not see any link, or at least I'm not aware of any link to Beijing. Um. And how much of the woke movement in the West gets money from the CCP? That's an interesting question. I I do not know. It should be interesting to look into. It's worth looking into. Um, um, any update on that woman who, who stabbed the civil rights lawyer to death in Queens. Yeah, that was a very suspicious case. Um, the fact that that woman was so uh, cool and rational in committing this brutal crime. A, a young woman, I think in her 20s, uh, a, you know, like committed such a brutal murder, you know, against a, a lawyer who's respected in the community. Um, with a weapon, with a, with a, I mean, it's, it's just unthinkable, you know. So that makes some Chinese Americans believe that he, she, she is trained. I mean, how can you, how can you hate someone so much that you, you kill him with a knife? I mean, if so, that makes people think that, you know, that she has, she's connected. I don't know. I have not been following up on that case. Um. All right, let me see. Um, oh, Van Ket, thank you. For, what's your opinion on Miles' score? Um, well, I, I think he, I think he was 
caught in the CCP pol- factional war in the CCP politics. I think he was somehow, uh, somewhat, he was affiliated with the Jen Zemin faction. Um, so, so he was openly against Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign, which we know targets the Jen faction in the early days. Um, so obviously, and also his friend Ma Jian was, you know, a diehard loyalist to the Jen faction. So he was, he was, he was clearly working for the Jiang faction. And then I think later that alliance somehow fell apart. Um, and then he all of a sudden started to enjoy his stardom and then realized that he may as well, you know, make himself an anti-CCP um, spokesperson for those people outside China. Um, because the, the, the pro-democracy movements outside China or the, or the pro-democracy activists outside China are very uh, fragmented, right? There's no like one platform or one like spokesperson that represents all of them. And then he's a showman. So he all of a sudden, you know, enjoy his stardom. And also West, all the Western media report, you know, give him a lot of press coverage. I mean, you don't see New York Times, all these major media report on uh, like this gentleman on the screen, um, what's his name? Uh, Xiong Yan, this, this, this chaplain who's, who, who's, who's running for, for Congress. I mean, you don't see the major media reported on Falun Gong, but all of a sudden they're all reporting on Maya's score. So he thoroughly enjoyed his stardom and he seized that opportunity and turned it into a, a, a money-making op- opportunity. But from there, uh, once your weakness sh- surfaces, then the CCP knows how to strike you down. And then it's his love of money that that has um th- that has caught him. So right. So that's that's my my um, assessment of the situation. Um, All right. Um, from Lafayette Porter, a study done by the University of Chicago indicated that the Chinese economy might only be a third of what the CCP claims. It's very likely, you know, it's definitely a fraction of what it claims, but whether it's one third, a half, that's up to the experts' um, quantification, but I think it's be- believable. Um, from from India, Burke, exactly. You never killed and stabbed out of race hate. Yeah. All right. Um, from Madi85, thoughts on CCP happy and willing to see the Ukraine conflict drag on as long as possible without getting into a hot water herself. Warring state? Are you referring to Xi Jinping's upcoming visit to Russia? Uh, That's a very interesting, I think I'll do a program next week. Um, Why? I think unfortunately, uh, Xi Jinping sees Joe Biden as weak. So that's that's his perception. So he wants to take advantage of a weak president that United States has and aggravate him with um how to say a bigger a stronger alliance or or a, or a bigger problem by aligning himself with um, Putin, and also from his perspective, he does not want Putin to to fall to fall too quickly. Um, because think about it: if you if you have the United States, you know, take ta- take down Putin first, then deal with Xi Jinping, then that's not to Xi Jinping's advantage, right? Because then the U.S. is more likely to to take care of both ad- adversaries. But if they team up and all of a sudden becomes a bigger opponent for Joe Biden to deal with, you know, they may have a, a, a bigger chance of, of surviving or 
yeah, surviving. So, and but I think it's all based on his perception that Joe Biden is not very strong. So that's just my quick assessment of the situation without really looking to what happens next week. But we should really take, you know, wait until next week when when he actually goes to Russia and then and then go from there. Lafayette, you pronounced my name correctly. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. Um, Democrat from Sam Wong, Democrat, Republican, CCP, who is better to who is worse? You mean, you mean which one does the CCP prefer, Democrats or Republicans? Um, I mean, somebody asked me the question, you know, in Taiwan, we have two political parties, right? The, the KMT and then the DPP. The DPP is generally more associated with the pro-independence pro movement and the KMT is uh, generally perceived as more pro-mainland. Um, so people generally believe that the CCP wants the KMT to be in power. But I always tell people, but you cannot assume that the CCP does not infiltrate into the DPP. Uh, just because the DPP is, you know, is more popular um, or has a, uh, has a chance to, to win the election again, um, the CCP will put in as much effort into influence its politicians. So it may, or it may even put in a bigger effort trying to influence DPP politicians. So it has a party that it prefers, but doesn't mean that it's gonna uh, not trying to uh, buy out the politicians in, in the other one. They're trying to influence both. So um, what it prefers, it probably prefers the Democrats because they're more they're more liberal and their ideologies is more um, their, their agenda or their, their platforms are more in line with what the CCP would like to see. So that's that's what they prefer. Um, just like they prefer the KMT in Taiwan, but that doesn't mean that they won't try to influence you know the Republicans, right? If, of course they will. Um, Frosty Flake, Lei, both China and Russia are on the edge of collapse economically. I've been watching bond defaults in China for five years. It, that's correct. But you have to keep in mind that the rulers of those countries, the dictators of those two countries, they do not care about their people's livelihood. In a authoritarian countries, they only care about their regime. They do not care if their people suffer or not. Whereas in a democratic countries, if your people suffer, if your people are not happy, they can vote you out of the office. So that's why politicians in the West generally have to pay attention to what people say, or what the voters say. But in the, in, in, in the case of Russia and, and China, particularly in China, uh, or maybe in both cases, they think poverty isn't a bad thing. What's, what's wrong with that? As long as they stay in power. So so that's why economic collapse, so that's why their economic collapse may not, um, yeah, that's why they don't care about uh, economic collapse as much as politicians in this country, in this country does or do. Um, voices on Espanol. Oh, this, this is not a question addressed at me. Why are MAGA followers so obsessed with Hunter but turn a blind eye to... That's not a question... Uh, that's not a question addressed at me. Well, it's because I think Hunter... Um, because Hunter Biden has a dealing with what? The Chinese, right? The, the In the energy industry. Um all right, I think that's all. Is that all the questions for me? If 
from HHT, does CCP fear Trump becoming president again? Okay, um, I know Trump is um is is a figure that some love and some hate, right? Um, do you know what what the CCP leaders think of him? Uh, the CCP leaders. Uh, how, how, should, how should I put it this way? They they respect him because because Trump knows how to negotiate with them. Uh, Trump knows how to push their buttons. So they on the on the surface, you know, CCP officials are the most they're actors. You know, like what they say is the opposite of what they think. So on the surface, they'll be the most, uh, they will say the most outrageous things against Trump, but deep down they know that this guy is tough. So, um, yeah, so unfortunately that's, <laughs> that's, but American public probably doesn't know this because Americans are so, so caught up in, 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 in our own opinion about what we like um, and what we don't like. And I think that's not necessary. Didn't I just see the news that the Trump said that, or or there's some uh, someone will, or or the the DAs in in New York will arrest him for some charges um, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the twenty first, which is the same day that Xi Jinping will visit uh, Russia. And I'm thinking, well, that would be if that happens, if the the DAs in in New York arrest a former president, and caused such division amongst Americans. It will be music. It will be a great news to Putin and Xi in Moscow, because that would be the the happiest thing that they will want to see. And what a stupid things for Americans to do, um, because we're you know instead of focusing on the real threat. We're just so caught up in our own ideological argument and fight. And I think it's very unfortunate if that happens. Um, that that's just my view because I think we need to we need to be united. We need to f face the common threat. And there's no point of dividing ourselves over politics. So that's just my view. I hope that doesn't happen. But if it happens, it's a loss for America, and it's a gain for for Putin and Xi Jinping. So, so those politicians in New York, you know, they need to think about this carefully. Wow, there are a lot of opinion. There are a lot of. Unconventional ideas that is according to Donald Trump, and we don't know. Where, where did it go? And we don't know if it will happen in the next few weeks. It probably will happen, though, sooner or later. Okay, I hope it doesn't happen. Because I'm telling you, that will make CCP very happy. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, from Calvin. Miles Gore is in the YouTube video. Why do Chinese billionaires keep disappearing? Uh, really? Okay. Well, before he wasn't disappearing, right? He he wasn't he wasn't disappearing. I mean, even now we know where he is. So I don't know why people call him disappeared. We know where he is. <laughs> He's just not. He's not in contact with the outside world, but he doesn't disappear. Well, thank you, David Mogan, for, for your donation. Um, from IDK0, IDK0, do you think Xi Jinping wants to be associated with Putin? Now they want to arrest him? Uh, yes, I think he does. I already answered that question, but I'll talk more about it next week. Because he is, he has his calculation. Let's put it this way. He has his calculation. 
All right. Um, let's see. Um, uh, from Paro, let's run Earth. Trump has a huge authoritarian streak. He would love to be in the same political position as Xi or Putin. I think strong leaders. Um, I, I I don't know if he has an authoritarian streak. He, he probably is going to... He does look like he's stronger than Joe Biden. Um, uh, but... But didn't Joe Biden say that not a lot of people want to be in the same position as, as Xi Jinping? I think Biden is correct. I don't think anyone wants to be in... in who wants to be in Joe Biden and Putin's position right now? So... All right. Um, I don't, my view is uh, I'm very skeptical about politics, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't get involved in U.S. politics because if in general, I'm very skeptical. But one thing that I notice is Americans are divided over our own ideolo ideological opinions. And I notice that the two sides are arguing bitterly, uh, or at least among some people. I mean, there's, there are people who who are more tolerant of each other, but there are people who are on the too far ends and are arguing bitterly. And I think arguing, debating is good, but we shouldn't make it so ugly because it's, I mean, in, in normal peace peacetime, it's okay, perhaps. But now the world is, <laughs> it's so dangerous now. And our enemies are what I'm telling you. The CCP has an army of analysts watching every move of American politics. They study their opponents so well. They have people who understands America, understand America, who are educated in America, telling them what's happening, what's happening in America, everything, every politician. Do we have the same army of analysts studying CCP? I don't think so. How many followers are watching my channel? Not a whole lot, right? You have more people following the, the, the Wu Mao channels. So you don't know the amount of effort CCP puts in to study the weakness of American politics. And if they see a loophole, if they see a sign of weakness, if they see something, they will take advantage of that because their whole agenda is to, is to win. They're in. A, they're they're a very competitive um, animal, shall we say? So, I think sometimes Americans that take everything for for granted. We're too comfortable with the freedom we have. You know, we don't know when we lost all of that what it means to our life. Take a look at people in Ukraine, uh, and imagine what life would be for people in Taiwan. And and think think about the 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 Chinese living in China, you know that could happen to all of us if we don't take this seriously. So that's why I generally don't like to get involved in American politics and and say this or that. But it just hurts me when I see Americans are so divided and attacking each other without reasons over some nonsensical political differences. Uh, so we should, that's what I think we should stop that and really focus on the danger coming from outside. So, wow, I've given my real talk. All right, so. All right. Okay, so I think I've, All right, so I think that's it for tonight. Have I? Do I have any other questions? I don't see any other questions for me, but you guys are having a great discussion here. That's wonderful. Um, do you, okay, question. Do you regret using Guo or Lu's sources in your videos? I don't regret that. Um, Lu De's sources, actually I analyzed one of Lu De's 
uh, videos and I offered my insight, which is different from his. Um, and because a person who, okay, a person who has ulterior motives, I mean, Miles Gore may be a spy, who knows, right? He, let's say, let's say if he, even if he is, that doesn't mean that everything he says or everything he said was wrong. You know, so there are things that he said are variable, are true. Are there are a lot of things he said that, that can be verified and I don't find it believable. So uh, I just think you have to be objective with people. Even someone, I think he's very complex. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean that everything he said is is not credible. I don't. I do not want to make that claim. And I think any extreme claims like that is problematic, in my opinion. So I do not regret having quoting him. Um, so yeah, that's just my view. All righty. Okay. So thank you for everyone. I will see you next time. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, bye-bye.